Hey you guys, we're gonna be going on a little cruise today. Called the Carrie B. Right here. How much was it? It's free? I guess it's a free cruise. This is the boat right here we're gonna go on. Carrie B. So it's a little cruise, about an hour and a half. We're gonna walk around. Look at this. Guys, drink the back by the rest of the steps, okay? Thank you. So you got a place to sit here. Obviously, you're gonna want to be up on top to look around. A little place where you can get drinks, stuff like that. Let's walk around here. Show you guys. This is where the boss is going to drive it from. So this is what you're going to see out. This is what he sees out the front. All right. It's going to be nice. It's starting to cloud over a little bit, but nice and warm. It's about, I think it's, I'd say around 83, 82, 83 degrees. Um, that's Fahrenheit. I'll write it down down here on what it is in Celsius. All right, we'll keep looking along here. If you see anything coming up, I'll let you guys know. It's going uh, north and southbound on US Highway 1. Now, if we went up the river, about 10 miles, we'd be out in Florida's Everglades. A little bit later on, I'll tell you why it's called the New River and the whole story about the whole thing here. But as we spin around, look over to your left right behind us. You'll see the uh, green place. First hotel here on the New River. Back in the 1930s, when it opened up, a famous actor came to cut the ribbon for the hotel. Later, when he became president, stayed here, President Ronald Reagan. Our longest serving mayor, six consecutive terms. Jim's got a yellow house, blonde wife, blonde kids, yellow lab, we call him Old Yeller. Next to Jim's house, you'll see the white place right there, infamous gangster Bugsy Siegel's old house. Started Las Vegas, built the Flamingo Hotel out there. And ahead to your right, I'm sorry, your other right, the left over here, you'll see the uh, arches. That used to be the John Robert Powers Modeling School for Girls. Look at the grass between us and the girls' school. Models used to go out there and sunbathe, and for some reason, the Kerry B used to break down a lot right about here. Again, to your left, you'll see the green condos. Get a waterfront condo there for $50,000. Back in 1970. Right now they're 300,000, not even that big, not even that pretty. Anybody ever been to uh, Anthony's Coal Fired Pieces here in South Florida? Yeah, good, right? What about them wings, right? <laughs> Look over to your right, here comes Anthony's house. Just ahead on the right, you'll see the little boat out of the water, the American flag there, Anthony's house. you got to sell a lot of pizza to live there. And off to your left, across from Anthony's house, you see the place here with the, uh, oh look, it's Lisa, our mate, there she is, right there. Off to our left, you see the green shutters, built out of a wood called Dade County Pine, this house. Unfortunately, they'll never build another one, it only grew in Dade County, Florida, and back then they used every single tree, totally extinct. The good thing about that wood was, impervious to insects, and it would not rot. Off to your left, looks like a tiki hut, but here in South Florida, they're called cheeky huts, built by the Seminole Indians. If you like a large kitchen, look over to your left. See the pontoon boat? The house right there, everything from the center doorway left is kitchen. We rode by the other night. There was a lady in there. We could see her when the lights were on. Looking at her phone, probably checking out the GPS, trying to find the pots and pans over there. Anybody know Nick Saban? Coach of Alabama. Uh, used to coach the Dolphins down here. Wayne Heisinga owned the Dolphins back then. 
talk a lot about him. But on the right, coming up, not this place with the yard, but the next one with the pool, Wayne owned that place and let the coach live there absolutely free while he was coach of the Dolphins. Right now, that lady and the dog lives there. <laughs> Over to the right, you'll see the flag flying in the Seafoam Green Place. They filmed the 1991 movie Cape Fear with Robert De Niro and Nick Nolte. Well, you might be wondering why they filmed a movie about North Carolina here in South Florida. You guys know Nick Nolte, right? He lived in that house, and at the time, he was under house arrest for drunk driving. So they brought the movie to Nick, pulled out the palm trees, put in pine trees, painted it white, made it look like North Carolina. Look over to your left, you'll see the orange place, the Eakins. The Eakins started Alamo Rent-A-Car. You might have heard of their company before it was called Alamo. It was actually called rent a -Rec. And over to your left, around Tarpon Bend here, look on the left on the corner right here. Beautiful property. This place originally built and lived in by the Bell family. The Bell family started Taco Bell. Call this the Taco Bell house. And over to your right, anybody see Harry Potter? Here comes the Harry Potter house up ahead to the right. Wayne Heisinger paid the people from Universal Orlando to come down, design, and build this house. And then guess what he did with it? Gave this $26 million place to his niece, Holly, as a wedding present. Who wants to have Wayne as an uncle? Who wants to be Holly? <laughs> over to your right. See that little river there? Tarpon River. Filmed the original Tarzan movies up there and here in Tarpon Bend on the New River. Look over to your left. See the rocks right in front of the Taco Bell house? See the crocodile on the rocks? Original prop from the original Tarzan movie still there. There's a park up ahead of us, Cooley Park, named after the Cooley family. They were murdered by the Seminole Indians. That started the Second Seminole Indian War. Major William Lauderdale sent down from Tennessee to command the troops. And eventually Fort Lauderdale got its name from him. Now look over to your left. Look at the Taco Bell house. See the rock wall on the end there? Passes boat. You see the top of it there? Look at the top, shaped just like Taco Bell. Look at the little window that sticks out. The original drive through Over to your right, check out Wayne Heisinga's property over here. Wayne used to live here. Unfortunately, he died about four years ago. He loved the boats. He'd be out here all the time waving at us. He'd been on the Carrie B three times with his family. Over to the right, the bell tower played about 500 of Wayne's favorite songs. Up top, the second deck there, jacuzzi. Underneath the infinity pool, the trim up there, of course, is real gold. Look at the dolphin sculptures coming up. That's because Wayne used to own the Miami Dolphins, the Florida Marlins, and the Panthers. Sold those teams. The family still holds on to about 5% of the Miami Dolphins. Now, like I said, Wayne passed away, unfortunately, but uh, the family sold this property to Chuck West. Chuck West, the founder of Pet Supermarkets here in South Florida, so he owns the place now. Look on the property here to the right. You'll see the little green place with the brown door. The tractor goes in and out of that door. That's the gardener's house. Another house off to our right is the last guest house on the property. Wayne Heisinga started a bunch of companies, three major companies that you might have dealt with or heard of before. Blockbuster Video, Auto Nation, and Waste Management. Over to your left, look at that White House. Beautiful place owned by Kenneth Simigran. He owns an investment firm, and if you look straight behind us, he owns one of the towers down there called One Financial Plaza downtown. Up ahead on the left, you'll see the rocks. Look behind the rocks, no house. That's because about four years ago, they knocked the house down. This is where the recent matriarch or grandmother of the Wells Fargo people lived over here. When she died, they knocked the house down. They did outline where the house used to be with rocks and plants over there. Maybe like a memorial to her. It's been like this for three years. Wells Fargo owns about 90% of the expensive storefronts on Las Olas Boulevard. They also own my house. Yeah, that's, you know, that's not that funny. You know why? These people want money every single month. <laughs> Hey, ladies, if you're looking for a 41-year-old bachelor billionaire, just became a billionaire, over to your left. Okay, right here. Bought this place three years ago for $11 million. This guy came up with one great idea. That's all you need to become rich. He came up with a little program that's online that helps companies advertise their company easier. That's what he did. Anybody remember Andy Griffith, Sheriff Taylor? Here comes his vacation home over here to the left. That 60s looking home right there. Andy Taylor's old home. 
Now, ladies, got another one for you here. There is a guy that lives in this house currently. He's 85 years old, from Canada, loves to come out here and work on those plants in his thong. Only his thong. Sometimes he's on a paddleboard. That's interesting, too. He hasn't been out today, so maybe you'll get lucky. We don't know. Coming up ahead, you'll see the house on the left. It's actually got for sale signs out front past this house right here. The next house up, owned by Harris Hudson. Harris Hudson, Wayne Heisinger's brother-in-law. Now, they started waste management together. He actually ran the company for Wayne. He was the general manager of Harris Hudson. He's got a great sense of humor, has a yacht. Remember, he runs the trash company. His yacht is called Business Stinks. Over to the left, here comes another part of Wayne's world, the yellow place over there, Pam Heisinger. She sold it about five years ago. The current owners, she just put it up for sale like three weeks ago or so. Now, look at the yellow house. Check this out. That yellow place has eight bedrooms, 16 bathrooms. There's a his and her bathroom for each bedroom. It's for sale right now for $28 million. Now, if somebody buys this house or one of these other houses, let the rest of us know so we can come hang out with you, all right? Over to the left, look at that empty lot with the blue flower pots. Also, the next house coming up, same owner, same property here. They're going to build a bigger house on the empty property. Current house has become the guest house. This is the former CEO of Kohl's Department Stores. Anybody ever shop at Kohl's? Yeah. Anybody use that Kohl's cash? Yeah. Look what they bought with your cash. Hey, over to your right. Check out this place with the white trim. Fort Lauderdale's biggest drug dealer. The CEO of Walgreens. Now we're heading outbound here on the New River. We're going to turn south on the Intercoastal Waterway. Intercoastal Waterway runs from Brownsville, Texas, around the Gulf of Mexico, around Florida, on up the eastern seaboard, over 3,000 miles long. As we turn right on the corner here coming up, you'll see what is a brand spanking new mansion these people moved in less than three months ago. This place took five years to build. The only reason we can figure out why is because every time we rode by, we never saw more than three people working on this great big place. It took forever to build this thing. Look how intricate the details are on this one. Now the guy that bought the property empty six years ago was Bruce Paddock. He owns the place. $8.5 million bought the property empty before it began to build this house. He had a pharmaceutical company up in Duluth, Minnesota, sold it for $550 million and moved down here to Fort Lauderdale and began to build this. Now, like I said, they just moved in. In just a few minutes, I'm going to show you where Bruce and his family had to rough it for five years waiting for this house to be built. That's coming up. But as we turn south on the Intercoastal Waterway, in just a second, if you look to your left and just ahead, you'll see the party location here in town. All the little boats out there on a beautiful sunny weekend, which we usually have here in South Florida. There'll be 100, 200, sometimes 300 little boats out here all tied together. There'll be food boats out here serving food. Sometimes we'll ride by and you'll see things that you can't unsee. Kind of like the guy in the fall. All right, now as we get going here, we're heading towards the port. We're gonna go out to the port and probably go out to the ocean today. We got another little piece of Wayne's World coming up to your right. Look straight down the canal there when we get up here. Look down to the right, there's a house on the point down there, Wayne Heisinger Jr.'s house. Now check out the place on the corner here. Love this house. This place right here, Bruce Paddock, from back on the corner there, bought this six years ago for $19.1 million. It has nine bathrooms. Recently sold it for $22 million to move into the mansion. This is where he had to rough it for five years. And coming up on your right-hand side ahead, the next house, you'll see the flag flying up there on the corner and the tall palm trees and the white pillars. This is considered the Fort Lauderdale White House. Kind of resembles the White House if you look at it from the front a little bit. Those trees are royal palm trees. At that height, they're worth about $30,000 each. Now the house belongs to Jack Hutchins. Jack Hutchins used to work for General Motors as an engineer. 
Back in the early days, General Motors was having problems with their car air conditioners freezing up. Well, one night in his garage, he came up with a little clutch that would turn on and turn off the air conditioner, solving the freezing issue. He wanted to patent that idea and sell it back to General Motors for $500,000. They said, Jack, you work for us. That's our idea. Well, he didn't see it that way, so he took him to court. Ten long years later, he finally won. He won $2.50. For every air conditioner they made, which made him hundreds of millions of dollars. By the way, look to the left of the house over here. See the brick place with the little pillars? That's the guest house, for crying out loud. He has another house just like this one in Costa Rica, lives there most of the time. Unfortunately, like everybody else, Jack's getting older. Jack is 96 years old now, and he's been legally blind for the past 15 years. But don't feel too bad for Jack. A couple years ago, Jack met a beautiful 26-year-old bartender from downtown Fort Lauderdale, got married. Jack is feeling his way around just fine right now. He's all right. Jack is good. Off to your right, see those yachts facing out? Lauderdale Yacht Club. You don't have to have a yacht to belong to the yacht club. Just yachts and yachts of money. Now, if you do have a yacht, they'll charge you more for the dock. So, you know, the money is $10,000 a year membership fee over there. The lighthouse with the black top and the white bottom up there. Up to your right, see this square building? This is one of the points of America building. Got some famous people that had uh, places up in there. Rodney Dangerfield, Leslie Nielsen. And also Jackie Gleason's wife had a place up there as well. Look over to your left hand side and look down the coast. See the big cranes down there? That's the south end of the port. That's where they take the giant cargo ships to load and unload them right there. On past that you'll see a pier. That's Dania Beach Fishing Pier. In the center of the pier and the end of the pier, those big buildings are Hollywood Beach. And way out at the tip end of the pier out there, way down there is Sunny Island. That's just north of Miami Beach. You can't see Miami Beach because it actually curves back towards the west behind those buildings. Now the port and the inlet that we're in right now stretch to 45 feet. All made in the early 1900s. Actually back then it was about 25 feet deep. Now 45 and soon they're going to 65 feet to accommodate even larger ships. Over to your left hand side, a secret Navy installation. Don't tell anybody I told you. That place right there deals with nuclear submarines offshore. They do a lot of testing of the submarines right off the coast here. And they do that because the water drops off to 1,500 feet within just a couple of miles away. We hear them on the radio all the time uh, talking about the testing and all that. Now the port was dredged out of an area called Lake Mabel. Lake Mabel was a wide, shallow portion of the intercoastal waterway. Light on cruise ships today for a Friday. We only have one in here. Usually on Friday we'll have three or four. On Saturday we'll have six to eight. Then they'll leave and then on Sunday we'll have another six to eight. And then on Monday usually two or three or four. And then Tuesday slows down a little more, maybe two or three. Wednesday might have one or two. And then Thursday is usually nothing. And then we pick up again on Friday. Port Everglades holds the world record for the most cruise ships in any port around the world at one time. Several years ago we had 15 giant cruise ships, 15 here at one time. That's a pretty big deal because the closest competitor was the Port of Miami with seven ships. Now the top three cruise ports in the world are all in Florida. Port Everglades, Miami, and Cape Canaveral. Over to your left hand side you'll see the building, the uh, TAN building. Nova Southeastern University across the top of it there. Wayne Heisinga provided the funding for the building, gave them the land. Look underneath of the name, there's another name scribbled in dark letters over there. That's Guy Harvey. Guy Harvey's the guy who paints the fish scenes, puts them on t-shirts and whatnot. He has a foundation to protect reefs around the world. In that building, they house live samples of every type of coral from around the world. This way, if one type were to become extinct, they could repopulate it with the samples in the building. Now, over to your left, right by the Celebrity Equinox, if we went south, that is the uh, intercoastal waterway south, down to the uh, south end of the port there. If we kept going, we'd get down to Miami and eventually Key West that way. But we're going to go up to the port, make a right on north on the intercoastal up towards Bahia Mar and Las Olas Boulevard. Be on the lookout. Sometimes we'll see uh, dolphins jumping around in here. Manatees along the shore once in a while. And of course, iguana up on the docks and different things all over the place. 
as we go up and down the river and out here in the intercoastal, uh, intercoastal also.